Hi, in this video I'll be showing you this. It's the Haya HD90 A2939S heat pump tumble dryer. What I want to do today is to show you around the tumble dryer, some of the features and benefits that it offers. Just before I start, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just give us a quick thumbs up. If you're following me on YouTube, and if you're having a look at this and you think it looks familiar, then I have talked about the washing machine recently. Um, this is the matching heat pump tumble dryer that sits with it. Now, heat pump tumble dryers in the UK market are massive at the moment. Uh, they have been very popular for several years now, uh, but generally as the price of the heat pump tumble dryers comes down compared to a normal condenser dryer, uh, some brands, they're not too far off. They're within 30 to 40 pounds. And personally, I think it's almost a no brainer to go for a heat pump. Uh, but what we're finding, because energy prices have really gone up as well, then the advantage of having a heat pump is so much more beneficial compared to having a standard condenser dryer. But I'll talk about the energy efficiency in a little bit. I've just zoomed in a little bit closer to the control panel on the dryer. Now, I really like the look of these. Uh, I must say, when we first ordered them and had them in, I'm really impressed with things like the build quality and just the overall look. I just think it looks really... Uh, modern and especially compared to some other washing machines in this similar price range uh, it's certainly a model that catches customers eyes when they come in the showroom uh, but all you need to do when you first get the machine all you need to do is just literally plug it in that's it there's not a lot of setting up uh, you've got a whole range of programs around here I just want to sort of go through quickly and just see what they or show you what they do uh, but first of all similar to the washing machine You've got a really nice LED display here. Uh, it's in the, the light blue, which I really like. I think it looks very smart, very easy to read as well. Um, if you're having a look at uh, control panels and displays from other manufacturers, uh, you will see that some of them, especially some of the ones in red, are not quite as easy to read. But uh, anyway, so just running through some of the programs. Uh, first of all, the mix. This is designed for mixed fabrics. Um, I suppose with, if you're just generally putting things into the dryer, uh, if you're not too fussed on sorting things out, then that's a good one to use. Uh, now this dryer has a maximum capacity of nine kilograms. It doesn't mean that you can put all nine kilograms in for each program. I just want to cover what each one you can put in there. So for this one, for the mixed load, then you can put a maximum of around six kilograms in there. Uh, as you go to the bulky, then with that one, uh, again, that's designed for heavy and large items, things like bed sheets or towels. Uh, with that one, you can put around four and a half kilograms in. Uh, you've got the timer option, and with that, again, that's for mixed fabrics, and then you decide on the actual drying time. So I'll cover that a bit more in a moment. Uh, with the woolen program, uh, that one again is quite a small load. That's only three kilograms, and that's just for delicate woolen items. I know a lot of people are probably a little bit nervous about putting woolens into a tumble dryer but you don't need to be because with manufacturers uh, a lot of them have got dedicated specialized programs like woolens and that enables you to get them dry and on the whole they will be at a lower temperature uh, within the instructions uh, i'll just show you this you have got a a guide that's what i'm reading at the moment and it just shows you the different load capacities that you can put in. Also it shows you the temperature that it's going to dry at, which is quite rare actually. Not many manufacturers tell you what temperature it's going to dry at. Uh, and on this woolen program, it's going to dry between 50 and 55 degrees, whereas most other programs will be between 60 and 65 degrees. As you come down to the duvet program, uh, it's a much lighter load. It's only a one kilogram. Uh, and with that one, uh, that's again, as it says, that's if you put in your, your duvet, your duvet covers in. Uh, warm up's quite a good one, so it's a quick drying cycle to dehumidify clothes and make it warm and comfortable to wear. That's quite a good, um, like almost like a refresh. And then you got the sports program, and with the sports, again, it's only a smaller load, four and a half kilograms that you can put in there. And as you go to the bottom, you've got the eye refresh option. Uh, this is just a manual selection, so it's just a timing. Uh, program that you select manually and all you need to do is you just select uh, on here how long you want the program so if you wanted it on for an hour then you can just select that and it doesn't use the sensor technology um, sensor technology is built into the dryer uh, it's a really good option uh, it's quite standard on a lot of condenser and heat pump tumble dryers and the main advantage is that it will actually switch off when the clothes are dry uh, so that's something that um, I suppose that a lot of tumble dryers have, and it's quite a standard technology now. 
as you come around to the uh, well one advantage of this I know some people are thinking why would I want a manual selection um, at home what we tend to do when we do the drying now I tend to put it on the airer to get the majority of the moisture out and then I finish it off in the dryer now if I was just put it in the dryer then what would happen is that it will detect that it's pretty dry and it won't dry for long enough whereas if you've got a manual selection on here uh, like on this tumble dryer then you can force it to dry for a certain time so it's a feature which I didn't see a huge benefit from beforehand um, but now that I've changed the way I dry uh, I tend to find it's a lot more energy efficient because the clothes are not in the dryer for so long so that's really why this kind of program is really good as you go on to the next program uh, this is quite a long program so it's basically a hygienic option uh, this is drying at the higher temperature of 60 to 65 degrees uh, similar to I suppose most of the other programs uh, so this is really good for things like cotton uh, mixed fabrics sports uh, things like sportswear uh, other fabrics like woolen silk shirts duvets are not suggested to go into this one uh, then you've got the baby care so with the the baby care option again it's a smaller load it's only four kilograms uh, this is really good for things like baby clothes or underwear that needs high temperature sterilization that's what they call it uh, then the next one is synthetics uh, with this one it's again it's four and a half kilogram load that's for any synthetic type materials uh, shirts and with that one it's only a four and a half kilogram load again uh, as i mentioned earlier not many programs have at, have got the option to tumble dry at the full capacity but we'll get there in a moment anyway the delicate program so this is really good for uh, delicate fabrics things like silk or underwear again small load it's only two kilograms quick 30 uh, as it says that's just a, a fixed 30 minute tumble drying time uh, and with that one that's just a, a standard time uh, with that one it's only a small very small capacity it's only a 0 0.5 kilograms uh, but I suppose for for half an hour then you couldn't have a, a huge load in there and then as you go to the top one then this is just having a quick read down the instructions this is the only program on here where you've got the option to select a full load so I suppose if you've done a full load in your washing machine so if you've got the other Hayer washing machine then if you want to put it in the in the tumble dryer then that's really the program I'd recommend putting it on the cotton program you can use it for the full nine kilograms uh, and with that one that's as it says that's designed for uh, for cotton wear some of these times you're looking here and go two and a half hours it sounds quite a long time as I mentioned earlier because it has got the sensor dry built in then it will detect when it's actually dry uh, now what you have got is you can change the things like the temperatures on here so you can adjust the temperature if you wanted to and then the next option on here is the drying level uh, now what this will do so it toggles between h1 h2 and h3 uh, it depends how dry you wanted everything now I know some of you are thinking well I just want the clothes to be dry uh, but H1 so let's just go to that so H1 is the ironing option now that's really if you want the clothes to be slightly damp um, so if you've got say a load of shirts or blouses that you you needed to iron but you don't want them to be completely dry you want them to be slightly damp so it just makes them a lot easier to iron then that's the option to select the next one is H2 and that's ready to wear so that's where you could just take them out put them straight on ready to go and then H3 is cupboard dry so you've got three different options now although initially it says two and a half hours for each option so even if you select H1 it's showing at two and a half hours and then even if you go to H3 it's still showing at two and a half hours uh, but clearly it will make a difference because if it's leaving the clothes slightly damp then that will be a much quicker program than if you go into the cupboard dry where they're completely dry. Uh, the eye time, uh, I think I covered that a moment ago using the, the eye refresh option at the bottom here. Uh, but basically what this will do is this is a more of a manual option. So you can use this on the timer, the wool, warm up, duvet and eye refresh program. And basically what you can do is you can uh, select the function to adjust the time manually. I'll just show you that again. So just go to the bottom here and if you press the I time then it just allows you to select a manual time 
and it goes up to, was it one and a half hours? The next option on the display is the delay. And what this will do is this will just delay the start of the program. Uh, it doesn't go up to the full 24 hours like most other brands will do. Uh, it goes up to 12 hours. Uh, and basically what that will do is that will actually uh, delay the start of the program, as I just mentioned. That's really good if you've got things like uh, Economy 7, where you've got cheap electricity during the night. Or if you just want it to start a little bit later, if you're going out, and if you just want, uh, if you don't want the clothes to be waiting for you for too long as it gets to the end of the program, because you can, uh, some of the clothes can be a bit creased. Talking about creasing, you have got a, an anti-crease option. Uh, and what that will do is that will, basically as it gets towards the end of the load, well, after the, the load is finished, then it will just rotate on the odd occasion just to stop the clothes sitting there um, and getting creased. And then basically when you open the door, then that will disable that function. And then the last option here is the start and the pause. Now, pause is really important. If you've forgotten to put something in, so if you've put all the clothes in, put it on for say 10, 15 minutes, realize you've got a t-shirt that needs to go in, then rather than just opening the door, you need to pause the program. And the reason for that is that the sensors will have kicked in. It will have detected how long the program needs to complete the drying cycle. And if you just go and open the door, then that will interrupt the cycle and it will need to start the whole process again. So what you need to do is pause the program, put the t-shirt in and they can carry on. Clearly if it's gone too far into the program and if you're putting a damp t-shirt into a load that is almost dry, then it's not really going to work. Being a condenser dryer, all of the water is stored within the container. Now there are two ways of emptying this. Uh, the main one, I suppose the majority of people will use, is to empty the water from the container. And you've got a cheeky little hole at the top here, and all you need to do is just go and empty the water, and then pop that back in. There will be an indicator on the front to show you when to empty it. The second way is to use this hose that comes with it. Um, if you haven't got it, then just contact Hayer or the retailer, because that should have arrived with it. And the main advantage is that you just, un you just take that piece of pipe off, connect that in and what it would do is the water can actually exit the machine just using this and what it would do is it will actually go into a drain outlet ideally near to a washing machine and that just saves you having to empty the water the container that's built into the machine to open the door nice and easy you got a little handle on the left hand side here and all you need to do is just pull that open a uh, couple of things to mention first of all i'm really pleased that Haya have stuck with metal hinges and door catches it's something, if you again, if you follow me on YouTube for a while, then I always point it out on washing machines and tumble dryers. And the main reason I point it out, because personally I think it's really important, some of the cheap brands, they've gone with plastic um, or like nylon um, hinges and door catches, and we do find that they're the first things to break, or if you lean on the door slightly, then they can snap quite easily. So I'm really pleased to see that we've got metal hinges and door catches. Also, it's a really good sized porthole, so when you're getting the clothes in and out, because it's such a big load at nine kilograms, then it's good that you've got a good sized porthole. Um, I'll measure across here, so at 35 centimeters, uh, around 14 inches, then that's a, a good size. And to go up here, because it's not quite circular, then you're looking at 30 centimeters there, or around 12 inches. Uh, you will see you've got the filter in here. And that's important to keep clean. So all you need to do is just pull that out and get any fluff or lint out of there. As far as the energy efficiency on this, uh, just having a quick look at the energy label, you'll see it's an A double plus energy rating, which means it is really energy efficient. That's the whole concept of a heat pump tumble dryer. Uh, you'll just see you've got some facts and figures here at the bottom, so 265 kilowatt hours per annum. Uh, also, it's showing that, proving that it's a nine kilogram load, and it's got the noise rating of 65 decibels. Uh, also, something to point out is that with any heat pump tumble dryer, the running ambient temperature that you can operate it in is, can be limited. Uh, if you're going to have it outside in a the garage, then personally, I wouldn't really recommend having a heat pump tumble dryer. Uh, all you'll find is that the, the time it will take to dry will be a lot longer than some of these programs, especially when it's really cold. Uh, the operating temperature really on this model, they're recommended between 5 and 35 degrees centigrade. Uh, if you go either side, 
clearly if it's going to be too much hotter than that, really why you're using a tumble dryer, you might as well just hang the clothes out if it's going to be hotter than 35 degrees. Uh, but it really it goes the other way, I suppose, especially in the UK around winter time. We have some people where they're buying a heat pump tumble dryer, they just want to put it into say an outhouse or an outbuilding where there's no heating whatsoever. Uh, and if it gets really cold, if it, especially if it goes into the minuses, then it can be an issue because heat pump tumble dryers don't really like the cold weather. If you are thinking of buying one of these models, I have provided a link below to show you where to get one at a competitive price. I hope you enjoyed this quick video on the HD90A2939S tumble dryer. I must admit, when I first did the, when I first started the video, I managed to remember the model number. Uh, I've got a, I must admit, I can't remember a lot of these numbers now, so I've had to revert to the energy label where it's written on there. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video on that Haya tumble dryer. Uh, if you have any questions on it, then I've got it on display at the moment. Just pop in the comments and I'll get back to you. Also, if you have got one of these, or if you have got a Haya tumble dryer, then let me know what you think about it, because I'd always appreciate the feedback. Thanks for watching.